and then this group and now I'll look at where it's positioned so if I put that at 40 uh, I'm not worried about the height I'm just looking about the position then and, and then I can copy and paste it so rotate it round the other way and then go to the attributes so I could make what was that other one um, probably need that to be minus 40 yeah there then I can make that one 40 right and then if I group those and copy and paste and then rotate them that way it makes a box this box will be that's that sort of supposedly our building shape now it's too difficult to see what's going off here without getting the light at the right angle let's move the sun around a bit so there you go that's that it's still somewhat lacking it needs it needs some windows I think and, and to, to achieve that effect what we can do is we could we could put a cube inside this because the center of this is zero now will be a good time to do that so create a cube and then I ex increase the size of the cube until it's overlapping with the where the, the windows are cut out in it I'll lift that oops need to lift the top of the cube up so that it uh, comes to the top of the building we go, that's it. Alright, oh, a little bit further up. If we just adjust it slightly. So now I need to see where that cube is. So if I go into the material for that cube and I make it a bright colour, in fact, I make it a bright ambient colour, then turn the ambient up. And then, uh, because this guy's got some ambient in it, global ambient, I can see whether or not it's coming far enough through yet to make it look like something's happening. And then I can just scale it up a bit at a time so it's overlapping. So this this can now be given a material to add some extra detail within there. So if we go into the material editor for this, and we'll go um, and oh, I was going to say the library, but now we'll build it up from scratch. So select the ambient channel, put a channel in there, and then we'll go back to basic again. Here we go, basic. We can click on this grid simple, make it object space and uh, actual selection. What we can do is ignoring this channel, I'll get rid of the diffusion, I'll just make that white or a light colour, is use this to create the illusion of something within the building then. So some some detail within the building. So I'll lower the frequency so the detail's not too it's quite tricky to get it right this. Okay. And we'll make the colours something a bit blander. So could be that and then we'll make it transparent because it's glass and give it a refractive index which will make it also reflective in fact it's glowing too much uh, too much is because of the ambient level but it can always be turned down we need this to be set on normal so we've got this block now that uh, is going to be the, the glass so let's preview that and see how that looks so this is now reflecting somewhat and there's also something going on inside it. If we can make it look a bit more like uh, there's something going on inside about using transparent settings instead of ambient. So, uh, right, I don't want that. I'll just make that transparent. And then you can see that the pattern's in there and it's also quite subtle now. Let's see if that's too subtle. Can't really see what's going off inside there. So maybe a bit of ambient is required. I'll we'll set that up at 20 for now. And uh, we can just, just see that something's going on. That you just want the, the hint of something going on that you can't see it very clearly otherwise you'll see that it's just repeating. Well it's a procedurally generated pattern. So it's just trying to get a balance between those two things. Let's see, let's uh, try parametric instead to see if that looks bit more suitable. That was interesting. So okay, right, well that, that looks more like it. So we've got some some blocks in there just to make it look like there's a bit of detail going on within the building and it's reflecting a bit of light from outside. We can increase the amount of light those windows reflect just by increasing the reflection value here. 
and if, if, it, if getting, it looks like getting a bit bright to turn down the transparency at the same time like so so having done that we can uh, well, save the file select everything that we've got group it together and then add that to our um, object library so now we've got that which now means we're in a position to transport this into another scene and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, one of my cloud sets here we'll, we'll use cloud set 3 and we'll use this sky as our uh, as our environment to put this building in so if we go to uh, where I've saved this I can just uh, bring it up because I've already got it handy so file open we just save that file anyways it doesn't matter I'll grab the file with the, the clouds in and that's what that looks like obviously we're not going to need this terrain and then we'll go into the create library and bring in our building now if we look uh, here the clouds are quite a long way above the building so I'm going to scale the building up well, that's not going to affect the materials because I've made it parametric which means it'll scale with the objects and the other materials will scale with the terrains that are applied to so I'm just lifting that up so it can be with the clouds and I'm moving it away from the camera because if we're going to be viewing uh, at the top of a skyscraper in all probability we're going to be doing it from a distance so we'll have a, a narrow field of view so there won't be much vertical perspective and uh, so it'll be like we're on the ground so I'll lower the camera down and then tilt it back a bit so that gives us the impression that we're seeing this from a long way away I'm just using the preview here to see what we're, we've got so this is um, a cloudy background it's got a, they've got a skyscraper I want to make it look like it's interacting with the clouds a bit maybe not too much but you know, if we can get some shadows on the buildings from the clouds or the impression that it's in the clouds to some extent that would be quite nice so place it up there with the clouds I'm going to move the camera around a bit and that's going to give me the impression that it's in a different position so I can get the composition and I'm going to change the document setup aspect ratio to um, to suit the subject if so uh, because it's uh, more tall and thin we'll use a square document setup all right and then we'll have a consideration of what we're going to do about the the lighting now we've got the shadow of the building falling on the clouds and uh, it's a little bit inconvenient because it's not a very high quality um, shadow there I don't know that looks particularly realistic so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change things around a bit I'm going to make the ambient white and that'll affect the color of the clouds and the IBL lab, the sky colour is being provided by this backdrop so I'm going to get rid of that and control the sky colour from here, the standard sky colour and I'll make it blue just by picking a blue out of there so it gives me an, a, a, a bluer sky and then uh, I'm going to change the position of the sun so and the sun's also coloured as well but I don't know whether or what I'm going to stick with that so let's have a look at what happens when we move the sun around we lose the shadow which is what I was aiming for but this clouds are looking a bit bright in this sunlight I could reduce the sun intensity I suppose that's an option first of all but I could also reduce the diffuse response of the clouds so I've moved the sun round we've got this sort of tint there if I want it to reflect more of the clouds I go into the cube that's providing my window effect we set the reflection higher still and reduce the transparency and, and reflection accordingly so we'll see how that looks and I might, the windows will look a bit brighter and they're reflecting the clouds more they've still got this tint to them I don't know if that's a good thing or not so I'd like to see a bit of detail going on in this area and you can see a bit there so you can see that the, the pattern that I put up at the top there is visible and uh, you know it's sort of getting closer you can see that you could spend a lot of time adjusting things a little bit and a little bit more and a little bit more but I've already overrun my 15 minutes so we'll give this a render and see how it looks I'll pause the video while it renders looks like it's going to take a couple of minutes probably three or four for the final AA pass 
Okay, it's not perfect, but it's not too bad. Um, the problems we've got is where the trains join on the corners. Um, it's they're not very accurately aligned. Um, that obviously, a bit more time spending like chat lining those would help, or you could include a little corner fillet in the form of a cube down each corner to to hide any faults there. I say it's um, the adjustments needed to be made in the deep text editor are quite quite uh, exacting and fine and you're working in a small um, interface so uh, obviously you have to render a bit and then try things out. The other thing is this cloud seems to be coming out of the side of the skyscraper which isn't uh, ideal and you can see a bit of the window cube up above the top there. Uh, so I'll lower this cube down so it's not so visible and then I'll get hold of the, the whole thing somehow. Is it group 7? Yes, you should name the groups, that would help matters. I'll lower it down a bit and maybe change the camera angle around while I'm at it. See how that looks. Just trying to avoid this, like, like it's coming out the side of the cloud. I want it to be in the clouds, but not a spouting cloud. So the, uh, the difficulty with lining things up is here's your volumetric cloud and that represents an infinitely the thick infinitely extending cloud of that thickness but you've no hint from that where the cloud is so you just have to keep repositioning your objects within the cloud and seeing how they collide now that's quite nice to get a reflection of the clouds on the on the side of the building there I might go for that I'll just lift this up because I've got a bit of a bit of height to play with before I see the bottom of the bottom of the object There we go, have a look at that. It's close, in, close enough there. I'm getting some nice cloud effects there, so I'll give that a render. Be aware of the problems, and uh, we'll call that it then. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's overrun quite a bit from the, uh, the promised 15 minutes, and I'm, I apologise for that. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial interesting, and uh, have an experiment with the Deep Texture Editor and using it to formulate the surface of terrains. You can uh, get some really interesting effects that way. Uh, the only thing is that uh, be aware that it might be might be quite a time consuming process. It's, you have to make quite a lot of fine adjustments and go in and out of the labs before, uh, before you're guaranteed to get something you'll be happy with. But uh, you should eventually get something that's, uh, that's uh, that you're happy with. It should happen. So I'm just trying to catch the end of this cloud just here because uh, it looks interesting. So the building's getting ever smaller and I'm taking more interest in the cloud here. <laughs> so, um, the advantage of skyscrapers is they're ideal subjects for, for pointing the camera up at the sky and having a good look at the, the clouds. I'll just rotate that around a bit so I can see a bit of the side of the building. Move the camera around and creep it around a bit further. So it goes on. So at some point I'm going to have to stop and render this because I really am going to run out of time. I can't, I'd like, like it to go on to another 15 minutes. Okay, right, I'll render this. So that's that one, which, uh, that's okay, I suppose. Right, and uh, this being a kind of complicated tutorial to do, I've had a few tries at it. This was my uh, first attempt. I used one of the clouds from uh, the Cloudscapes 1. You can see there's a slight problem here looking up so steeply. This is an error in the uh, rendering of volumetric materials. Uh, if you look directly straight up, you'll see there's a hole in every material, even if it's solid. So, uh, but otherwise, this has been done in exactly the same way as the one I showed you. We've got this uh, reflective transparent material for the windows. Oh, I did put a little bit of a another channel in the just uh, broadened this horizontal section and and added it back in, averaged it back in to create a, another panel in there. Um, and this doesn't have a very sophisticated uh, look at the top of it. And then on my second attempt, uh, this was the Big Sur cloud with the free content provided. And I've got some shadows falling on the buildings quite nicely there. And this is when I started to experiment with putting a bit of a pattern into the top section. And this turned out a bit better, but then again, I did spend a lot longer lining it up. And that kind of invalidated the video, really, because it sort of went on for far too long as really this one has so uh, i'll leave you with that and i uh, hope you uh, hope you enjoy experimenting with the deep texture editor